In this demonstration, I'm going to show how to take a standard list box and turn it into what I'm going to call a paging list box. That's one where the list box has uh, just up, down, or forward and back controls at the edges as opposed to having scroll bars. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to quickly create a sample data set just to illustrate and fill in our list box. And let's uh, put a whole bunch of items in here. And let's make sure these items aren't too long. There we go, and let's give it a, uh, a numeric header as well for each item. There we go, and if we look at our sample data set, we can see how the numbers go with each item. And that was, that what we'll do is we will drag these into the scene, and when we do that, it creates a standard list box. And what we want to do again is get rid of that scroll bar. So to do this, what we're going to have to do is edit the list box and the scroll viewer within the list box. So we'll edit the items panel for the list box. And let's call that our wrap items panel. So notice there's a stack panel in it. We are going to get rid of that stack panel. And instead, we are going to get a wrap panel. Now there's a wrap panel, so you see the items are going horizontally. We come back good enough for now. So now we're going to actually edit the template for the list box. Let's call this a paging list box. So now that we are inside the template of the of the list box, we will edit the template of the scroll viewer. Let's call it a paging scroll viewer. Again, we'll edit it locally to make it easier to change various aspects of it. And now is where we're going to do most of the work. So there's a grid around everything within the scroll viewer. And what we are going to do is we want to take the content, which is the scroll content presenter, we want to put it in a central cell. So the first thing we could do is set up our grid to have the right number of divisions. And this is going to be a little bit easier to do in the collections editor for the grid. So I select the grid, open up the advanced layout properties, and I'm going to change the column definitions. So right now there are two columns. I'm just going to add another column. And the first column is going to have a, uh, it's going to be set to auto. Second is going to be set to star. And the third is also as well auto. And the visuals don't look right, but don't worry about it at this point. We're going to change the rows as well. We're going to add one more row. So the first row is going to be auto. Second one, star. And third one, auto again. And what we're going to make sure is we put the scroll content presenter. That's the content. We're going to put it smack dab. We're going to put it in the center. So that would be the first row and the first column. And that's rectangle, which is used in the uh, out-of-the-box scroll viewer. We don't need that anymore. Now what we want to do is move the uh, horizontal and the vertical scroll bars into the correct places. So we are going to move. We are going to have that span all three columns. That's the horizontal scroll bar. And we want to make it stretch across the entire control. So we made its height auto. And we take the vertical as well. And we are going to put the vertical in column one. And we're going to make it stretch across all three rows. And you can't see it now because of, again, the scrolling properties of the list box. We can get rid of these margins. They're not necessary anymore. Okay, and to make this a little easier, let's put the content presenter in front of the scroll bar so we can see where our content is. What we need to do at this point is uh, put spaces around that content to account for the repeat buttons. That's the increase and decrease buttons that are on each of the scroll bars. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to use some dummy objects that fill in those columns and rows on either end that are auto-sized. So what we'll do is we'll go and just add some rectangles. And let's give them names so we understand what we see here. So let's call this the top spacer. And we are going to give it a width of 18, which is the size of the repeat buttons on the ends of the scroll bars. And because we're going to be using that number in lots of places, let's convert it to a new resource. And let's call it 
scroll bar repeat button size and I'm saying size because I'm using it for both width and height and now I have that resource available in both places and this is the top spacer we are going to put it in the top row in the first column so that's all correct and we can have it autofill so you see that little spacer let's give it a color that makes it very easy to distinguish and since we use that color in multiple places again we'll convert that to a resource so I'll call that spacer fill okay so there's our, our top spacer so what it's doing is it's creating space for the buttons on the end of the vertical scroll bar now we want a bottom and we need to change the properties of the bottom one so you can see its margin is a little off let's reset that and we want to put it in the the bottom row which is really row three because uh, it's really row two because row counting starts at zero and now we're going to do the same thing for the left and the right so the left spacer again we have to reset that margin and we'll put that in the first column and let's put it in the second row and we'll make a right spacer as well now these aren't visible because they are under the scroll bar and I'm just doing that because I don't want them to interfere with the hit detection on the scroll bars and I'm going to put this in column, the third column, which is indexed as column 2. So now what we want to do is, you notice those are creating empty spaces. We don't need the spaces at the top and the bottom because the scroll bar isn't visible. So what I'm going to do for the top spacer is I'm going to hook its visibility. I'm going to template bind that to the computed vertical scroll bar visibility, which is uh, automatically set by the control. And I'll do the same thing for the bottom one. And I'll do that for the left. and the right and so now if we oh and you'll notice that the content you can see through the content to the underlying uh, scroll bar we will wrap that into a border and let's get, uh, we'll bind that borders background to the background color of the overall control which happens to be white and also notice the scroll content is uh, it's vertically filling and what we want to do is uh, template bind that to the vertical content alignment and the horizontal as well now let's come out and see how our list box actually behaves now when you come out it doesn't take those new visuals we have to rebuild first so now we rebuild and as I resize this control you can see I just see the buttons at the end. If I change the, uh, if I turn off the horizontal scroll bar, now I get a vertical scroll bar that controls those items, and then we are done.